I am the contrary. This is my world. Hi, I'm Dr. Shikha Sharma. I'm the founder of Nutri Health and a wellness expert. I believe nutrition is the foundation of life and technology is that dynamic frontier where we all are going. The future of food, or maybe the lack of it, I don't think all through the ages if there's been one thing that we've all been shown, maybe in science fiction movies or even in books, it's been that you pop a capsule and you're done for the day, and it's the perfect nutrition that your body needs. No preparing food, no cooking it, no cleaning up after that. None of that required, just one capsule. Are we almost there? Well, one particular sector, people seem to think we are almost there. The experiments have started. Are we there yet and what are we missing and what could be the problems with this and is it already there as perfection? So I can't get anybody better than this, right? To have you out here is going to be, I think, one of my most interesting debates because I'm personally very interested in this as a whole. I mean, I would love to have been part of the experiment. Uh, I don't know what I would have ended up with and would I have been going to a doctor to get treated eventually or would I have become 20 years younger? I don't know which of them would have been. But I'd love to understand from you, first of all, specifically to do with this, the Soylent thing. What do you think of this? So, um, so I have a mixed, uh, mixed opinion about it. Okay. What I like is that uh, the, this is creativity, you know, and it's human, it's a very basic human need to be creative about things. Okay. And food is a very, it's a foundation of human life. And if you're getting creative about food, it's, it's a very nice thing. At the other side, the scientist part of me, uh, believes that uh, there are a lot of gaps in this whole thing. Uh, there are uh, scientific protocols have not been followed. Uh, studies have not been done. Double blind studies have not been done. So as a scientist, I'm pretty skeptical. Okay. But but as somebody as at a human level, as someone who believes in visions and dreams, I think I'm excited. So it's like a mixed bag of these two. Of okay. These so so two, let yeah. me understand. Let's 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 actually deep dive into this now, right? Right. First and foremost, let's get one thing out, which is the theory of it all. Right. Is food just something that can be bioengineered? Is that pretty much all it is, that we take in something, it has some kind of bioavailability that is made to the human body, it breaks down as a chemical process, it gives you the nutrition it wants, and then it goes out. Can this be bioengineered to perfection? See, bioengineering of food, I think, is what's going to happen. Okay. And uh, specifically because as humans, we like to go on adventures. Okay. And one of the adventures was going on to the moon. The right. next adventure, perhaps, may be Mars. Right. We climb mountains, we go to glaciers, and you're not going to get food over there. You're not going to get your steak and your burgers there. Right. So you need something. So we won't have that capsule you put in a microwave and boom, yes. the steak and comes you, out. Uh, That's not going to happen, yeah, right? Wish it would, It'll yeah. be the opposite, only yes. that the capsule will remain like a dull, boring powder capsule, yes. right? There is something about you and me going out for a meal, yes. right? There is something about the texture of food, the aroma of food, what I feel in my hand. Why do I eat more of something when I find it very delicious? Right. The good or bad of that nutrition, I eat a lot more of that, so therefore it is good or bad for me. What about things that are good for somebody, not good for somebody else? Have we solved all equations here? So, uh, not really. Because, uh, see, the couple of things is that uh, food, like you said, is a sensory experience. It's also a pleasurable experience, you know. And you, if you take out the pleasure out of eating food, would people become depressed? Would there be emotional disorders? Mm -hmm. So, those things have never been considered because unless we run this, uh, this product or the soil end, mm -hmm to at least a thousand people, uh, we would not know what are the long term, uh, what is the long term impact, uh, the emotional impact of this kind of food. Because what happens when you're feeling, uh, when you're stressed, you want something and you know, you just go out and eat something, maybe a bar of chocolate, maybe a coffee, maybe cheese. Now what happens if you just have to pop a pill and it's not satisfying your emotional hunger? All right, now, now another part that I think I find I'm very, very fascinated by is the overall ramification and effect of this. Let's start off on a very micro level and move to macro. When we can say that a powder, a capsule, or something which takes a few bare seconds of my life become my food and my meal every single day. Let's start at the very micro level. At one side, we may lose some of the sensory experience, yes. but it is estimated, depending upon the, which study and which person who's been given that study to do, that between 20 to 30% of a human's life 
is spent on uh, processing food, creating food, cooking food, cleaning up after food, going shopping for food, and then reversing it all over again and doing it again and again. That also is a sense of drudgery. Yes. Now, if I can just do this with just a powder mixed in a glass of water and I'm done for the day, for the entire day, that could be a huge thing. I might just want to give up the sensory experience just to have the utility of that. Does that doesn't that become a very attractive feature? So, like I said, you know, there are some some areas where it may be practical like for example like uh, uh, people uh, who are working on a project they're on deadlines and you know they don't want to do all this but that will be like time bound you know so for for some time period pe any and everybody might do this but for forever i have serious doubts about that because the sensory experience is far too superior and powerful to be actually totally let go what I'm going to do is yes. that this is the interesting debate. So what we did is yes. we're actually going to take this question out to the street. Right. And the question really is this. If you were able to get a food which is a powder that takes the drudgery of cooking and all other things away, would you be able to give that up and give up the sensory experience of food? Let's weigh this on the street. I would like to try because I'm not getting proper meal for a day. I would like to try, but I'm a foodie person, so I would prefer to eat. It is a time saving. Maybe because it actually, you know, uh, instead of doing and making and then waiting for it, like drinking something and, you know, instantly I get the energy and that amount of stuff which I expect from the food, normal food. Uh, definitely, we will try it because in today's date, we eat chicken, we eat burger, so there is a fat problem. So obviously, uh, we take some energy drinks, we like, so also take it. I would like to taste different spices of food instead of having just one drink. So I would rather not go for it. Okay, now, a lot of people seem to think it's a great idea. Some people said they would never give up a burger and a pizza experience. So that's pretty obvious. Yeah. You're saying I can still eat normal food. Right. And when I'm in a big hurry, I can pop a pill. Yeah. Does that really work? I mean, wouldn't that be a greater problem than anything else? I personally feel um, it's possible and it's doable and it wouldn't be a shock. The reason is that many people, and especially people who are, say, uh, like techies, who are very, uh, say, obsessed, who are very driven, they usually like to have the same food every day. So even in their normal lifespan, they end up having the same food every day for five days. And they think days. of this as an adventure anyway, yeah. right? I mean, they'll be like, I I'm just glad. popped a pill. Yes. And that's it. And that'll become their big, I mean, I'm sure there'll be a hashtag saying, I pop, popped, pop, a pill. Pop, popped food pill done for day, right? Yeah. I mean, that's it. So that, that will be number one trending for many years. Absolutely. Right? Because whoever will do that. Yes. So you're saying that there are pe people that might do it, the yeah. people that might just go back to something else. So, but you're saying as a nutritional expert, as as a you know wellness expert, right. you're saying the hybrid model also works. I think the hybrid model works, and it may actually work for a lot of people uh, who may like this little adventure. But at the same time, you know, they don't really want to give up on life and and okay. eat the other good stuff also. Okay. So now yeah. let's say I, we said the micro level, which is an right. individual. To, let's go macro now. Okay. Right. Uh, some of the greatest problems in the world. Right. Malnutrition. Absolutely. So, right. you know, countries that are completely malnutrition, I mean, children that from the day they are born till, you know, uh, th the death rate is so high that they actually die because the nutrition is bad, right? Absolutely. Would this be a solution to that? You know, I always think that uh, solutions need to be simple and elegant. Only then they are powerful. Okay. I don't find the, the simplicity in the solution. Mm -hmm. It looks like an interesting option, no doubt about it. But for a solution to be mass, it needs to be available easily you know it needs it, it needs to be very transparent it needs to be easily accessible okay. so i don't find these couple of benchmarks which uh, mass solutions should have accessible transparent simple and elegant so i think that uh, it may be one of the options which many countries can try especially a country like india because i was happy to see that the that the, the founder wants to bring down the cost of this correct yeah it's almo almost 2 to 3 dollars a meal and he wants it Absolutely. to be under Absolutely. i mean what would translate in india to be about about 50 rupees right Absolutely. a meal that would start making a lot of sense for areas where you really can't do much Absolutely. so could this be i mean if so let's take the theory that you spoke about right. and the practicality of what we are discussing right now. If this could be the perfect nutrition for the human body, right, and then could be under 50 rupees a meal, right, could this be a huge revolution in the making? Definitely, and I think um, like protein powders, like a lot of you know, there's a lot of uh, work happening in this whole area okay. of uh, making uh, cost-effective 
complete nutrition plans, but it would all depend on, uh, you know, how quickly the founder becomes greedy. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, if it becomes greedy, then there will be also corruption in the process. In the process. They may not really know whether it's truly nutritionally right for you or they're just claiming it to be and they've got some, you know, seriously wrong studies saying it's all completely yes. right. Yes. Okay, now let's get down to, I think, the most exciting part of this. We've spoken about the theory that one day it will be yeah. possible that we can do this. We've spoken about the sensory experience. What happens from now? We've got this right. one particular product. There may be one or two others that we'll hear about in the next few months. What do you see will happen from here? There seems to be enough funding. There seems to be enough people interested. Uh, but off camera, you were talking to me about the fact that till now, whenever something like this has come about, it's actually been for the premium market first. Right. Right. And then take me through what you think really will happen from now. So what I think is that there are a couple of interesting things. First, like when I saw the pack, uh, I mean, I don't have it in this thing. I just saw, saw it, a, a digital version of it. It had something similar like a Superman logo. So somewhere the founder is looking at optimal nutrition. <laughs> <laughs> you okay. know? Right. So one track would be optimal nutrition, uh, you know, the elite sportsmen, the, the, you know, the, the elite people who want, uh, who have everything to, you know, purchase this and, and make it uh, like rejuvenation, anti-aging. So one okay. part is the anti-aging elite, super nutrition. Correct. The other path is with governments uh, working and creating uh, food health uh, supplements because that's another big area Correct. where Correct. business happens. Mm -hmm. uh, the third area could be where uh, it could become like a technology and, and uh, with licensing where a lot of companies get licenses to use this technology. Mm -hmm. So these are three broad areas where I think it will start moving. The fourth of course is it will create healthy competition. A lot of other companies or or product manufacturers are somewhat working in the same direction. So I think the fourth would be a lot of other products uh, with similar kind of uh, objectives or goals coming up. All right, so on that basis, I think all the restaurant and food industry, you can breathe, but we surely will be looking forward to this. I think there are many different ways that this can be an absolute revolution. When food is not food, but it's technology in a bottle or in a capsule, I think the world dramatically changes. And maybe for the first time ever, the timing is such that it may well happen. Next time, we'll see you on The Contrarian with one more topic. Thank you very much, as always. Thank Fantastic. you. Fantastic.